My name is Benjamin Berger, and I'm a professor of paleontology and geology at Utah State University. And I thought I would talk about how to get started on a career in paleontology. Now, if you're watching this video and you think, I really, really want to study fossil animals and plants. I want to work either in the field collecting fossils or at a natural history museum. And I just love dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals. How do I make a career doing that? Well, in this video, I and in the next video, I'll help guide you on the steps and discuss what to study, uh, the various classes you should take, and what education you might need as a paleontologist. In a second video I'll post next week, I'll discuss the different types of jobs in paleontology and how to find the right job in the field for you. So if you're still in high school, middle school, junior high, or elementary school, you want to do well in all of your classes. And if given the choice, you want to take as many science classes that you can. Now I recommend that you should take at least a year of geology, biology, chemistry, and physics. Um, some states here in the United States lack some of these sciences at the high school level. So supplement this with books if you can. So you should read as many science books on paleontology and spend time learning about rocks and minerals and animals and plants that you're most interested in studying by reading books. Now to be a paleontologist you really need to attend a college or university and selecting the right place to continue your studies is, is one of the most critical decisions that you'll make. Now, if you're switching careers, it may be a little daunting considering to return back to college. Um, but it's basically the best way to get into a paid paleontology job. But if you don't have the time or resources, uh, volunteering at a natural history museum may be the best avenue to get you into the paleontology field. Now, I highly recommend not attending a community college, a vocational or technical school, since these schools lack instructors that you would need for a well-rounded program for an uh, aspiring paleontologist. Um, it might be tempting since these uh, classes at these schools are often cheaper, but it's not going to be very useful for you. So look for colleges that have at least one instructor or professor who teaches paleontology. Ask the university or college if those classes are taught regularly and try to find out about the instructors and how well respected they are in the field. Another key thing is to look to see if they have an associated natural history museum within the university. Here at Utah State we have the prehistoric museum in Price, Utah. So a University Museum gives some experiences to you that you can volunteer at the museum, you can learn fossil preparation, you can learn fossil collection, and you can hang out with other aspiring paleontologists. Now after you've applied and been accepted and you've selected the college that you're going to enroll in, you'll need to make the next big decision, and that is, is what major you would like to pursue. Paleontology is not offered as a major at any college or university here in the United States that I'm aware of. Um, rather, it's often wrapped, wrapped up in either the geology department or biology department. And it really depends on the university and the specialization of individual professors in each department. Now more and more universities are kind of pushing uh, paleontology into the biological sciences as those, those departments tend to attract more students. However, here at Utah State University, paleontology is within the geology department. Now, as a biology or geology student, you will take classes in both disciplines. And so you want a program of study that's flexible to take those classes that would be most useful to you. It also depends kind of on your own passion, whether you want to be a biology or geology major. So if you are more on the rock side of paleontology, you go on to the geology side. If you're more on the fleshy tissue side of paleontology, you go into biology. So do you, if you love cracking rocks open and looking inside, or do you like cracking dead animals open and looking inside? It just kind of depends on your own passion. 
Now, this decision whether you want to be a geology or biology major uh, may affect your job prospects when you graduate. So you want to think about this. It's, a, it's an important decision. Now, the most important uh, classes start actually in the first year of college with the uh, three basic sciences, uh, geology, biology, and chemistry. Um, those will often come with really lengthy labs that will require a lot of study and work to master. And but they're, they're really a great basis for the upper division classes that you'll take later in college. Uh, also, get through any of the math requirements uh, very early in college. Paleontology as a class is often taken in the second year or third year of your program, and it's often taught in geology departments with a focus on invertebrate fossils, sometimes paired with vertebrate paleontology. Uh, when you take the paleontology class, contact the professor and meet with them to discuss your interests in paleontology, and they will likely know of resources such as field work at an active dig site, uh, graduate students needing uh, volunteers, or undergraduate research opportunities uh, that you can get more experience with. Now, other more advanced geology classes that you should take and master are geochemistry, uh, mineralogy and petrology, uh, sedimentary geology, and stratigraphy. Um, you should also think about uh, other useful uh, classes that might be offered like paleoclimatology, oceanography, and geomorphology. Um, those might be useful to you depending on your interests. In biology advanced classes, you should take and master, it kind of depends on the fossil organisms that you find most interesting. But if you're interested in like, say, dinosaurs or other prehistoric uh, animals, uh, courses in anatomy, comparative vertebrate anatomy, osteology, embryology, evolution, ecology, herpetology, ornithology, mammalogy, and ichthyology would be very useful. Now, specialized classes in paleontology re related fields might be offered, and you might consider taking them uh, if, if, if they are offered. These include things like phylogenetic systematics, that's kind of the organizing of organisms, how you organize organisms, classify them, uh, biostatistics, uh, bioinformatics, um, geographic information systems or map making, um, cartography, uh, scientific illustration, uh, museum curation, um, functional morphology, biomechanics, and other more advanced topics. They're kind of specifically related to what you're interested in. Um, you might also see if there are very specific paleontology courses offered like mammalian paleontology or courses on dinosaurs. And if you're interested in you know, fossil plants, of course, take botany and paleobotany. So basically what you're doing is you're filling your transcript with as many courses related to paleontology that you can find and you find interesting. Um, in my own education, I took most of these courses. Um, I also volunteered at the University Museum and I spent my summers digging up fossils with graduate students. I remember one of my professors asked me, where are you going for graduate school? And I was like, Gosh, what is graduate school? You know, I had spent four years studying and it was like not, not over yet. So most jobs in paleontology require a master's degree in the field. Um, to get a research permit here in the United States, you need a master's degree. Um, so it's, it's kind of important. Uh, it's a very important thing to think about as you pursue your education is, is where to go for your master's degree. Now, a master's degree is a two to three year program, um, often with a very specific research project and advisor that you work with. You still take classes, but you also work on a research project that you lead, and you defend your research project in front of a committee of three to five professors. Now, not all universities are the same, and some differ in their requirements. Here at the Uinta Basin campus of Utah State University where I teach, we offer a master's degree in geology called the Applied Environmental Geoscience or AEG program that I mentor graduate students who are interested in paleontology, but also related geology fields. And it's a two year program. It's a fairly uh, course intense program of study. Applying to a master's degree program is more like applying to a job than to an undergraduate program. Because often you're applying to work with a, a particular ad advisor or professor, and you want to find the best fit. 
uh, not only in specialty and interests, but also personality and support for you as a student. Um, fewer students are accepted, so it's uh, much more difficult to get into a master's program than it was getting into an undergraduate program. Apply to fellowships. Often what limits acceptance numbers into graduate schools is the available funding at each university. Since uh, graduate programs are supported by grants or university teaching appointments. So if you have your own funding for research, a university would be more excited to accept you since your project would be funded by your fellowship. But if you don't have a fellowship, you can still apply, as sometimes fellowships become available as you work through the program and apply to research grants. Now, after you have finished your master's degree, you have another choice. And that is whether to go on and do a doctoral degree or seek out a job at this point. Now, doctoral or PhD degrees are useful if you're interested in uh, an academic job. Um, in the field of paleontology, particularly if you want to be a college professor. Uh, doctoral or PhD uh, degrees are also helpful in applying to grants and funding to support your own research projects as you can serve as a PI or principal investigator on various government grant applications. However, having a master's degree will get you into the door of most jobs in paleontology, um, but it may limit your advancement later on depending on your institution and or company. So some places like universities highly value PhD degrees, while other institutions like private companies, museums, nonprofits, uh, organizations, they tend to value experience and talent as a paleontologist more than having a PhD added to your name. Now I took five years after my master's degree before I returned for a doctoral degree. Uh, I probably could have worked the rest of my life without a doctoral degree as a paleontologist. However, I really wanted to do my, my own research and was spending basically all my vacation time out digging fossils and I wanted to lead my own uh, research expeditions rather than tagging along with, with other projects dependent on other people's funding and their research interests. Having a doctoral degree was a requirement of my current academic teaching job here at Utah State. So consider this a possibility, especially if you want to continue on in academia. However, getting into a doctoral program is twice as hard as a master's program. And it's a big decision since the average program of study lasts from five to six years. This is why professors are mostly old people. Now, research done while pursuing a doctoral degree um, often defines your later uh, research career, but, but not always. However, during that program, you write a, basically a massive book, a dissertation, which you defend in front of a committee of five professors. Um, if you're doing fieldwork overseas or leading a expedition into the field to collect fossils, Expect this research to take years to complete. However, the experience is, is a lot of fun, really rewarding, and especially if you're really interested in leading your own research project and you're very disciplined. Now, after a PhD degree, a postdoctoral job may be an option. Um, this is where a funded research project, often it's a large museum or university, is looking for additional experienced people to join their team on a particular project. These are time-limited research projects that last about two years, um, but they may be extended if funding is available. Now, in paleontology, this might be an opportunity to join an international expedition to some exotic location. and or a, a university or museum that's looking for a very highly skilled paleontologist to join the crew for, for various project. Um, they tend to be kind of rare in paleontology. Uh, most commonly, they're offered by the big museums here in the United States, such as the Smithsonian Institute, the Chicago Field Museum, or the American Museum in New York City. Now, hopefully this gives you an overview of what it takes to become a paleontologist. Uh, next week, I'll post a video about jobs in paleontology. And hopefully, I did not scare you away from your dream to become a paleontologist. Thanks for watching.